Hey folks, what's up? Happy Bound for Glory Eve to you. It is Saturday morning, November 4, 2017. Got a discussion question for you guys this morning. This is something I've been thinking about a lot lately. Do you think that Jeff Jarrett's vision or his um his dream of Global Force Wrestling is now officially dead? Now I want to say first of all, I really feel bad for Jeff Jarrett and I really want to see him succeed. And it seems like he's got some personal demons that he's going through. But I feel like he has a good lady by his side. And I think he's going to get through all these things. But I tru truly do feel bad for the guy. I mean, I think he really acted as the fall guy for Anthem for for a little while. I think he was the face of the negativity. Uh, you know, I think Ed Nordholm made maybe some questionable decisions. And uh, it seemed like Jeff Jarrett really took the brunt of the heat for it. Whether it be from workers, wrestlers, the wrestling industry, the dirt sheets, just whatever it is. So I do truly feel bad. And this is the other thing I feel bad about. I've spoken many times how I felt that Jeff's Global Force Wrestling vision was was uh, going to be really successful after watching the Amped Anthology. You know, I, I said this, this to me is a clear cut number two promotion on TV. So he comes over to Impact Wrestling and all these ideas... He finally gets a put to fruition under the Impact Wrestling banner. And then it becomes Global Force Wrestling for a very short amount of time. And then he's put on the leave of absence. And now he's gone from the company. They've, they've parted ways with him. All those ideas are now still there. Now, from what I understand with the Global Wrestling Network, this was something that they've been working on for a year. You can't just put, on a, put up a network in a couple months. But I'm sure that the Global Wrestling Network, I'm sure they had a different name. Obviously, the Global Wrestling Network has to do with Global Force Wrestling. They're still promoting a global product. The color scheme in some cases is still the green, even though I think we're going to see that you know, kind of change over time. The partnerships, which this was always Jeff Jarrett's vision years ago when he started this company. I'm going to partner with all these independent companies and Japan and Mexico and the UK and this and this and this. So he brings all those ideas to Impact Wrestling and now they have that ball and they're running with it and Jeff Jarrett isn't even there anymore. He's not around. So I really feel terrible about these things. Now, there's a lot of podcast networks that come to me, kind of see to see the success of the channel. And, you know, I've had more than a handful contact me about, you know, maybe being the impact guy for their channel or joining their network. But here's the deal. With my own channel and, and you know, all my, my marketing mind and my business mind and everything that I know, my social media mind, I put that to work for myself. Because this is my channel. I own this channel. I own this name. This is my gig. I don't want to go to, you know, uh, Johnny Superstar's podcast network. And they have a whole group of podcasts. You know, they're covering Ring of Honor and Lucha Underground and WWE and XT, all that stuff. And I go there and say, hey, here's my ideas. This is, you know, um, these are some of my special ideas that only I came up with for my, my channel. But, you know, let's all use them. I'm not going to bring my mind into another setting. So this is kind of what Jeff Jarrett had d done in this case. I don't think he really thought twice of it. I really thought that he felt he was here for the long run. I'm sure Ed made him feel like he was here for the long run. But he comes over and says, and th this is my vision. Let's make these partnerships. And... Boom, they make the partnerships, and they're still running with those partnerships. Jeff Jarrett can't do that now. He can't start Global Force Wrestling you know, again and do that again. I mean, I guess, for, you know, maybe he could. I don't really see that, though. I feel like he'd have to completely start from scratch. It's, it's, like, it's almost like someone stole his idea, even though they didn't because he was an employee for the company. He just did not own, you know, he didn't have that ownership stake where, I think, you know, if I didn't have that, I probably wouldn't have felt comfortable bringing my vision and my ideas and my connections over. So, and the worst part is a lot of the wrestlers that Jeff Jarrett brought over, they're being released. You know, they're keeping a couple of those guys. And I don't think Anthem and Impact is doing anything wrong here. You know, maybe maybe outside looking in, someone, oh, they stole Jeff Jarrett's vision. No, Jeff Jarrett was an employee of the company. 
he brought those those ideas to the table and and has established impact wrestling whatever happened with him no longer being an employee and being employed by the company that's that's completely different so i want to see jeff jarrett succeed however i don't i really don't see how he could take that global force brand because that, that brand is so tarnished now like it, it's he brought it to life when it when impact became global force and then for it to like go away again i mean he can't just just he has to start over maybe he partners up with someone else but obviously something um something wasn't working with him with the company we won't know exactly what it is but I kind of want to know what you guys think if you feel like Jeff Jarrett is kind of screwed now. Or do you think that he could still get this Global Force Wrestling brand off the ground? Obviously, getting the TV deal isn't going to happen. But he could. You, you see smaller independent promotions working deals with Fight TV and other streaming services to where they can stream their product. I mean, even Shine you know, or Evolve, how they do that one weekend a month or one show a month and they stream it. He could still do something like that. But as far as, you know, bring, bringing like Global Force Wrestling to TV and all that, that's all, to me, that's all like insanely dead right now. But I want to see Jeff succeed. I don't want him to, I don't want to see him be a failure at all. I really don't. And he still is responsible for a lot of what we're enjoying right now on, on TV. And I think, I think something that happened with Slammiversary is I think that it, there was a lot of hoopla and media and bells and whistles for Slammiversary. It's not like that for Bound for Glory. I was just thinking that the other day. I was like, damn, this shit is Sunday and there's no media. Like there's no, uh, you know, all the wrestlers on all, all these podcasts and, you know, getting all these interviews done on websites. It's, it's not like that at all this time around. I think they lost a lot of money at Slammiversary. I think they, they did make some money, but I don't think they made, they had profit. Because I know the pay-per-view buys were up, but I think Jeff also convinced Anthem to spend a lot of money. I think that's where some of the problem lies in all this. Because you see Bound for Glory is like big time scaled back on the financial side. So, I want to know what you guys think. Sorry if I was rambling a little bit long this morning, but uh, just let's talk Jeff Jarrett. Subscribe to the channel if it's your first time here. Peace.